life is a gift for which we're grateful. We gather in community to celebrate the glories and the mysteries of this great gift. We're here today to celebrate the life of George McKeever. His life has been a gift and continues to be a gift within our lives. Uh, May Sarton, the poet, wrote a poem called All Souls. Did someone say there would be an end, an end to love? Oh, an end to mourning? What has been once so interwoven cannot be raveled, nor the gift ungiven. Now the dead move through all of us, still glowing. Father and child, lover and lover mated, are wound and bound together and in flowing. What has been plated, that means wound together like with hair. What has been plated cannot be unplated. Only the strands grow richer, dark into light, light into darkness spin as lost human voices speak through us and blend. What has been once so interwoven cannot be raveled, nor the gift ungiven. Uh, we who have lost loved ones, family, friends, may be surprised when deep feelings appear out of nowhere, like waves of emotion suddenly washing over us, feelings of emptiness, or feeling disoriented, perhaps a kind of numbness, or a sense of relief. Unexpected anger may flare up, though you normally take other shortcomings with good humor. A cloud of sadness may pass over. It's a cloud. Such feelings appear unexpectedly and even persist for some time, returning like ocean tides at holidays or anniversaries or out of the blue. Our feelings are evidence of bonds that have grown up between us, parent, child, grandparent, great-grandparent, friend. We need not analyze nor understand our feelings. Rather, it's ours to pay attention to those feelings of affection and loss and to do to find what in life heals and strengthens us. What is it that strengthens you when you're sad? I'm reminded of a, of a family who at a celebration of life all went fishing afterwards. <laughs> Another one who had fireworks and a, a few beer. <laughs> um, I remember a children's story of a, of a child whose, whose uh, grandfather had passed. And they used to drink pink lemonade on the porch and plant flowers. And so after he had passed, she had a little party on the porch with all her friends with pink lemonade. And every year would plant flowers. What is it that strengthens you? Forgive me for this emotion, but it's real. What is it that strengthens you when you're sad? Caleb Gibran um, reminds us, when you're sorrowful, look again in your heart, and you shall see that in truth you are weeping.
for that which has been your delight. Whatever our pain of loss, may we remind ourselves that it's only because we have become a valued part of another one's life that we now feel the loss. It's ours to celebrate the gift that our loved one is in our lives, a gift that cannot be ungiven. I would like to tell George's story from one person's gift. This is the story of George Randolph MacIver from Julie's point of experience. Born September 14, 1950 in Birmingham, Alabama. George did not like talking about himself, so the information that I have about his childhood is very limited, and most of that came from his mother or father. What I can say is that from a very young age, he worked to please others. One early example was making toast for his grandmother, M-E-R, I don't know what that stands for. Murr. Murr, okay. Mary Ann Reese. Murr. They called her Murr. At about the age of five, he's making toast and accidentally burned the toast severely. He brokenheartedly presented to her with apologies only to have her say, that's okay, honey, I like it that way. And George took her comments literally for the next several years <laughs> until she finally told him otherwise. He worked hard to consistently burn her toast exactly the same way whenever he served it to her. As George grew, what a wonderful thing, I like it that way, to take care of his heart when he was five. I think it's good parenting. As George grew, he watched his parents with intense interest as they worked to make the lives of those that they interacted with better. In fact, he followed one of his mother's career paths and became a clinical social worker. He followed his father's path toward activism. In fact, George and his father, Jim, assisted Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and others with organizing the Birmingham Children's March for Civil Rights. One Saturday morning, George went to his favorite downtown Birmingham bookstore, and as he opened the door to exit, was hit by one of Bull Connor's infamous water hoses, which prompted his parents to decide to relocate the family to the upper East Tennessee mountains. After moving to Tennessee, he campaigned to improve services for young adults in the church that his father attended.
continue the story of George Randolph McKeever. George obtained his undergraduate degree from the University of Tennessee, where he relished in being a part of an honors program that provided him with the ability to hang out with some of the notable professions, professionals in psychology of the day. Forgive us, but we're gonna drop some names here. <laughs> Such as B.F. Skinner, Carl Rogers, Eric Erickson, and Victor Frankl, among others. George was not all work, though. He was fun-loving as well. And he did not like being told that something that he wanted was not possible. Uh, one example of this follows. During his early undergraduate experience at the University of Tennessee, Janis Joplin was invited to perform by the Student Body Entertainment Committee, and she accepted. When the university president heard of her stance against the Vietnam War, he withdrew the university's invitation. Did not sit well with George at all. In fact, it, it prompted him to write Janice and invite her to the University of Tennessee for a couple of weeks respite, telling her that they could hang out and he would be responsible for arranging safe places for her to hide. Lo and behold, she accepted. What resulted was two weeks of small group concerts, jam sessions, and writing sessions that resulted in a lot of fun and some amazing reel-to-reel -reel recordings. Who else would have tried such a thing and been charismatic enough to get her to accept?
<laughs> I'm glad. Wow. So once George entertained his professional life, entered his professional life, his focus was working with traumatized children and occasionally traumatized adults as well, which brought him great professional fulfillment. However, this could not compare to the joy that he derived from being dad to Ashley. He spent every second that he could with her, and after retirement enjoyed being her primary mode of transportation. Her soccer dad, a volunteer at school book fairs, a help, help her with Girl Scout cookie sales, and so forth. On several occasions, he remarked that he could not imagine anything better or more important than being Ashley's dad.
wrong road Must have a code That she can live by And so Become yourself Because the past Is just a goodbye Teach Your children well their father's hell did slowly go by and feed then on your dreams the one they picked the ones you'll know by don't you ever ask them why if they told you you would cry so just look at them and sigh Two fabulous grandchildren, Zane and Alana. Uh, please know that you made your puppy incredibly happy and that he enjoyed spending time with you guys and teaching you things such as fishing, gardening, flowers, and other forms of nature singing songs with you, and other things. More than he could even put into words. He was so proud of the two of you. And loved you bo both very much.
Please. Right. Um, I know there are other experiences and memories that that you have, and uh, uh, for the family of only for the uh, grandchildren, that would be a gift. If you would share um, an anecdote, uh, a moment of life that you shared with George. Uh, this is your time, and I don't know if I can make it <laughs> easy after this wonderful uh, presentation. Thank you. But if you have something that you want like to share, um, please. Um, we ate apples on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> did you happen to have any peanut butter with any of those apples? You yes. did. Yes. <laughs> you have any other memories you want to share? Okay. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. terrible at public speaking, so please bear with me. <laughs> my wife, great. Ashley, might attest that I'm not great in long conversations either. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for coming. We are here to remember and celebrate the life of George McKeever, who was my father-in-law and one of the most compassionate people I've ever met. He helped us raise our son, Thane, and our daughter, Alana. We both worked full-time jobs, and in that time, he would look after them, imparting valuable life lessons, helping them with their word and letter recognition at a very early age. He taught them how to fish, and how sometimes it's just about enjoying the company and appreciating the peace, not necessarily about catching fish. We would have many conversations when we got home from work. Most of these were about how the kids did that day, whether it was great, which was usually the case, or whether they decided to start the apocalypse, which I'm sure many parents can relate to. However, sometimes we would talk about ideologies and have civil discourse. While he definitely made me reflect on my viewpoints I had not previously considered, he almost always had an unnatural ability to draw on his sarcastic wit, which would always cause me to smirk or smile. <laughs> If we could take a few moments of silence to remember a time when George made you laugh or smile. I will always miss getting to come home and see you. Ashley and I could not have done it without you. If Ashley is any indication, your positive influence in our children's lives will continue to show throughout their lives. Thank you for everything. You have earned some much needed rest. Refreshments are available in the back and we hope you all can stay and enjoy some.